Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. A few months ago, Adobe added a new tool to the current version of Photoshop. Now I'm not talking about the beta version of Photoshop, I'm talking about Photoshop 2025. That new tool is called the Adjustment Brush. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to use it. I do want to mention at the top though, that you can't do anything with the Adjustment Brush that you couldn't already do in Photoshop. The Adjustment Brush though, will allow you to do things, some things, a little more easily than you could in the past. For example, I have this image of my grandson, and let's just say I wanted to brighten his face. And let's pretend that I'm using a version of Photoshop that doesn't have the adjustment brush in it. Well, there's probably a dozen different ways in Photoshop that I could go about brightening his face. One of the more common ways is to use an adjustment layer. And if you look over at the right-hand panel of my Photoshop, you'll notice I have a tab of adjustments. These are the adjustment layers. If your Photoshop doesn't look like mine and you're having a difficult time following along, what you could do is you could go up to Window, down to Workspace, and then over and down to Photography and use the Photography Workspace. That will allow your Photoshop to look a little more like mine does, and maybe it'll be a little easier to follow along with what I'm doing. Now, what I would want to do probably is add a brightness contrast adjustment layer. With this adjustment layer, I could brighten the image by going up to the brightness slider, move it to the right. But you'll notice it's brightening the entire image. I mentioned that I only want to brighten his face. Well, it's easy to do because the adjustment layers come with a mask. And by default, that mask will be white. When it's white, when I move a slider, it, the adjustment will go everywhere. All I need to do, though, is to remove part of the adjustment from an area is just to paint in black on the mask. Or what would be easier is I could click on this mask and I can make the entire mask black and then paint in white to allow it to go to where I want it to go. What I mean by that, I'm clicked on the mask right now. I could invert it instead of like getting a brush and painting in black. I could just invert the white mask by hitting Command-I on my Mac. It's Control-I on a PC. Now I have a black mask. Now you'll notice if I click on the adjustment layer and move a slider, nothing's happening. The black mask is blocking the adjustment. Well, if I want the adjustment to come through on his face, all I need to do is click on this black mask, get a regular old brush, hit the B key on your keyboard to get a brush. Uh, over with brush settings, you have hardness, size, just a regular old round brush, kind of soft, opacity at 100, flow at 100, Smoothing at 10% is fine. I'm going to get a larger brush by hitting the right bracket key, make it larger, left bracket key smaller. So this nice large brush, I'm clicked on the mask, make sure I'm painting in white, make sure the front swatch is white. If it isn't, tap the X key to flip-flop them, and then just paint on his face. And you'll notice that on the mask, I'm painting in white, and I'm allowing the adjustment to come through on his face and only his face. So that's easy enough to do, right? That's not that hard. I'm going to go back to the adjustment layer, and then I'm going to take brightness down a little bit to make it look a little more natural. Now, let's just say that I want to do this adjustment in the current version of Photoshop. So what I'll do here is I'll get rid of the adjustment layer by clicking on the little trash can right here. So we're right back where we started. So I'll go to this Move tool so we're not looking at a brush. I want to use this new adjustment brush. It's over here on the tool well, right here. It's this little brush and it has a little circle like with a half moon white and half moon black. If you don't see the adjustment brush on your toolbar, what you could do is go up to edit, down to toolbar, and then click on restore defaults and then click done. And it should put it on your toolbar. When I activate the adjustment brush tool. What you'll notice is over at the tool settings, we have an adjustment, brightness contrast. If I go to the drop down, you'll see that all of those adjustment layers that are over here, at least most of them, are over here now. Also, your contextual taskbar, see my little contextual taskbar here? That also has the drop down there as well. So I could use this brightness contrast adjustment layer. I have the brush. This is the adjustment brush. I have brush settings right here, just like the other one. I want to add the adjustment, use the plus brush, and I'll get a little bit of a larger brush, hitting the right bracket key, and I'll just paint in brightness on his face. 
Now you'll notice that when you look at the adjustment, it moved both brightness and contrast. I'll reset contrast. I don't want to add contrast to a space, but I'll double click on that slider to reset it. And then I could do it. So you can see I did the exact same adjustment, but it's a little easier. I could do it a lot faster. But there's even more you could do with the adjustment brush. Let me go to another image here. Have this image of the bird. Have the adjustment brush active. Let's say I just want to add some vibrance to the bird. So I'll go from brightness contrast down to vibrance. Now I have the adjustment brush and I could try to brush on the bird, but I might like bleed onto the background and catch part of the tree. You'll notice up here with the brush settings that there's this tool right here. This is the object selection tool. With it, when I activate it by clicking on it, it will use AI to find various elements in a scene. And you'll notice if I hover over the background, I get this red overlay on the background. That means I could do an adjustment just to the background. If I hover over the bird, you notice I get an overlay on the bird. I could just do this adjustment on the bird. So I'll click right on the bird. You'll notice that the mask is pre-made now with the bird. It has vibrance all the way up by default. And I'll add some saturation as well. So you can see that that object selection mask really helps. It works really well. Well, let's go to this image. And let's say I just wanted to do something with these doors. I wanted to make um, them more colorful and maybe change their um, brightness, make them a little brighter or something like that. So what I could do is I could still use my adjustment brush tool, but this time, and I'm using the contextual taskbar, you could come up here and do it as well. It doesn't matter. Let's say I want to use a hue saturation adjustment layer. I'm going to again get the object selection tool. And you'll notice if I hover over the grain elevator eventually, because it's just got to find it, AI has to find different elements in the scene. So it has to find the sky, find the water, find the chairs, and so on. So what you could do, now I'm hovering over the building, but I mentioned I just want to do the adjustment to the garage doors. What you could do is instead of just hovering over the object and clicking, you could draw a rectangular marquee around the object you want to affect. For example, I want to affect these garage doors. So I'll just draw this rectangular, rectangular marquee tool out from the door and let it select it. Now you mean, did it select it? Well, go up here and click on overlay. And you'll notice now when I turn on the overlay, it's only on the garage doors. So because of that, my adjustment will only affect the garage doors. So I don't know what I do. Maybe I'll make it darker. Well, I had some saturation. Maybe I could change the colors of the doors a little bit. see so you could see how you could use that object selection tool and instead of just using it to select what you want to select you could just draw that rectangular marquee around what you want to select and it will find it like it found those garage doors now there's one more thing you could do with the um adjustment brush for example i have this image it's kind of busy right i have the adjustment brush tool and let's say that i want to add brightness contrast to the dock. So I'm going to again get the object selection tool and I'm going to hover over the dock and I got an overlay on the dock, but it's kind of on parts that I don't want to adjust, but that's okay. Click on it and apply it. Apply it. Turn on the overlay up here. Now you have a plus brush and a minus brush. I get add to this selection or remove from it. I'm going to remove from it with the minus brush and then we'll come over here and we'll remove it Oops, get a smaller brush by hitting the left bracket key. And I'm going to remove it from here. I'm going to remove it from over here and over here. Let's do this real quick. And move it from in here. Because I don't want I just want to affect the dock. It's affecting these um these are lights actually. So at night that throws light on the dock so you don't actually fall off the dock or walk off the dock. But um let's say that's okay. I think it's leading up back there a little bit. So we'll get it off there. And then I'll turn off the overlay because I have it now applied exactly what I want to. If I wanted to add to this, I could add to it with a plus brush, but that's okay. We'll turn off that overlay and let's add some contrast and maybe take brightness down a little bit. Yeah, it looks pretty good. So there's before and there's after. There's before. 
and there's after. And that's the new adjustment brush tool, relatively new adjustment brush tool that's in Photoshop 2025. So you don't have to download the beta version to use this. Hopefully this will help you better utilize it so that you could get like precise adjustment layers and adjust exactly what you want to adjust. Thank you everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. Talk to you guys soon.